Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Riley McManus. A fire marshal's investigator was on the scene at a Northside residence that was heavily damaged by fire yesterday afternoon. Thunder Bay Fire Rescue responded at around 2.30 to a blaze at this building on Lake Street, following multiple reports of smoke coming from the structure. Fire crews were met with heavy flames spouting out of the second floor kitchen facing Manitou Street, but the blaze was quickly extinguished. No injuries were reported, with initial searches finding the building to be clear of tenants. Thunder Bay Police secured the scene and then requested the Fire Marshal's office to investigate further. There is still no word on the cause of the blaze. Thunder Bay Police have made a major drug bust on the city's north side. The search warrant was executed at 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon at a home on Picton Avenue. Officers with the intelligent unit confiscated a large quantity of fentanyl and cocaine with an estimated street value of around $185,000. Police also seized a loaded handgun. Two suspects were arrested at the scene without incident. An 18-year-old woman from Montreal and a 40-year-old woman from Thunder Bay are both facing charges of possession of fentanyl and cocaine for the purpose of trafficking, along with firearms charges. The two suspects remain in custody until their next court date. Potential candidates for Thunder Bay City Council and local school boards received a crash course in municipal politics last night. A candidate information session was put on by the city's returning officer and an advisor with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs. About a dozen prospective candidates attended the session in person. The meeting's purpose is to increase understanding on the process of running for public office, with details on eligibility and campaign financing requirements. The major difference in becoming a candidate this election is that each person will need to make an appointment to file nomination. City Clerk and Returning Officer Krista Power says it can be intimidating to run for public office, so they want to make sure candidates have as much information as possible before making a decision. Everybody knows everybody, everybody has an opinion, and again, for or against, so that's certainly something that can be intimidating. Public office is a, a big step, and we encourage people to um, really consider whether or not that's a step they want to take in order to serve our community. And there's much benefit to that, not only for the candidate, but also for the public and what they can bring to the role. Nomination period officially opens on May 2nd. More information on the October 24th municipal election can be found on the website tbayvotes.ca. The Thunder Bay District Health Unit is reporting one new COVID outbreak today and the end of another one. The Plaza One area at Pioneer Ridge Home for the Age has two known cases among the residents there. Meanwhile, the outbreak on the 2 South unit at St. Joseph's Hospital has been declared over. Over at the regional hospital, the number of COVID patients currently admitted remains the same, today at 26, and the number of COVID patients in the intensive care unit has fallen from five yesterday down to three today. The overall hospital occupancy rate remains the same as yesterday, at just over 105%, and despite the drop in COVID patients in the ICU, the occupancy rate there has risen to 104%. Local officials representing injured workers are reacting to the Ontario government's announcement to have the WSIB explore increasing compensation for people off work due to illness or injuries. The local injured workers group has been calling for higher WSIB payments for many years. Currently, people on workers' compensation receive 85% of their pre-accident take-home pay. The proposed increase would bring that percentage to 90%. Thunder Bay's Janet Patterson is the president of the Ontario Network of Injured Workers Groups. She says they've been lobbying the government on this issue non-stop. And while there's a step in the right direction, Patterson has a number of questions. She wants to know if the increased compensation would only affect further claims. And she also wonders if this is all just talk for the upcoming provincial election. Of course it is if they get voted in. So that's kind of, uh, again, going to the fact that, you know, they've had a lot of years to do things. Wayne Gates has been raising the issue of deeming in the House for the last three years, and the government has turned a deaf ear on it. Labour Minister Monty McNaughton says the WSIB is in the strongest financial position in its history. So now is the time to look at increasing compensation payments. Prospective students have a lot more options to consider when applying to college or university in Thunder Bay, as now they can do both. Confederation College and Lakehead University have announced a joint admissions program that would allow students to apply for a college diploma and a university degree at the same time. 
Under the new system, successful applicants in 33 different programs would get a conditional offer from Lakehead at the same time as their acceptance to Confederation College. The partnership builds on existing programs that allow students graduating from, from Confederation College to transfer to a degree program. But this takes the uncertainty out of the process, as students will have a spot waiting for them and a smooth transition to Lakehead. Students entering our film program will have an opportunity to earn an arts degree uh, at Lakehead. Uh, our social service worker program. Typically, lots of our graduates will go on to the university and get a social work degree. Um, our Aboriginal Community Advocacy Program now has an opportunity for two different degree pathways um, through this agreement. So I'm anticipating even more growth in our students graduating here and moving on to Lakehead University. So from the point that a student begins their diploma, they've indicated um, uh, by application that they want to be uh, that spot um, in, a, in a degree program. Our enrollment services, student success, uh, will be coordinating with Confederations Colleges enrollment services and student success to ensure that transition it honestly is seamless. Bolia also says the option to start with a diploma before transferring to a degree program creates flexibility and increases accessibility for students, while at the same time creating stability by allowing students to plan further ahead. It's been an exciting week for staff and students at Dennis Franklin Cromartie High School as the school returned to an in-person learning format for the first time since before Christmas. With the end of the school year right around the corner, the It Gives DFC students the chance to reconnect with friends after a difficult four months. Vasilios Bellos has a story. There is definitely a feeling of excitement and relief around Dennis Franklin Cromartie High School with students back in the classrooms for the first time since December. Being able to socialize with friends, ask a question face-to-face -face with their teacher, or participate in sports and activities once again, no doubt had an impact on students. DFC Principal Sharon Anshikineb says bringing the kids back for the final month of the high school year will be hugely beneficial for them. Um, not just for the academics, but also for mental health, you know, being able to build those relationships in person, that's important. Um, online, unfortunately, it hasn't, it hasn't been, it hasn't worked you know, for many of our students. Most students at DFC, around 100 at this point, have returned to the classroom this first week back, and those numbers are expected to gradually rise as they get closer to the end of the school year. Some are still trickling in. Some, stu some communities were in lockdown, so as soon as they are able to travel out, they'll be joining us. Then we have another 20, more or less, that uh, have opted to do online. While all students are excited to be back, it may be those graduating this year that are most thankful for the experience. Derek Moniez is in his final year at DFC and says while it doesn't make up for the past two years, he's happy he can wrap up his time at the school with his friends. It's really good that one month here, it's better than having no time at all with them, rather just only looking at them from the screen. It encourages me, like, I'd rather be around, surrounded by loud classmates rather than distractions like my TV or Xbox at home, my phone, I'd rather be here and that really helps me. 26 students are expected to graduate here this year at Dennis Franklin Cromartie High School, an even more exciting and impressive feat considering the difficulty of the past two years. Vasilios Bellos, TVT News. The City of Thunder Bay has rolled out a new app to make paying for parking easier than ever before. With the new software, drivers will be able to conveniently pay for parking right on their phone. The Passport Parking Canada app can be downloaded and used at more than 1,000 municipal parking spots across the city. It also allows for topping up if your time is running out, meaning you don't need to go back to the meter if your shopping takes longer than expected. Along with this, the software means parking tickets can now be paid for directly through the city's website. Parking Authority Supervisor Jonathan Pass spoke about the convenience of these new services office. Everyone these days are looking for uh, more digital services and this fits in with the, the city's digital strategy as well of bringing more digital services to the residents. Uh, and yeah, everyone's doing things on their phones these days. This is the kind of service that they're looking for and uh, we are uh, happy, uh, pleased to be bringing it out for the residents. The Passport Parking Canada app can be downloaded for free on any mobile service from the App Store or Google Play. This year's Polar Plunge has blown away its previous fundraising record. The popular event held April 9th at Marina Park raised a whopping $109,000, which will greatly support four local charities. Jessa Clement reports. 
The amount the plunge was able to raise had exceeded the expectations of everyone involved. The $109,000 more than doubles their original funding goal and blows their previous record of eighty-two grand out of the water. Plunge event chair Ryan Gibson admitted there was some worry after the two-year delay, but is now at a loss for words about how much support the Thunder Bay community has provided. We were moving up and up every year we've done this, so it was getting better and better. And COVID happened, and you know we had some real concerns of whether you know what was it going to be like, and uh, we set a goal, you know, and then to, oh, to more than double it. I, I mean, I, I can't put it into words how exciting it really is, and to know it's all going to where it's supposed to go to make a real difference. It's it's pretty amazing. The amount raised will be able to positively affect a wide range of individuals, with the money going towards the Special Olympics, Roots to Harvest, the CNIB, and Pro Kids. And CNIB program lead Kim Butter says the impact the money will have on these charities will be huge. For the charities themselves, it's been a really interesting two years where we haven't been able to do special events and to jump out of the gate and have this one exceed our expectations, exceed our last year's goal um, is going to make a huge impact and be able to get those programs back out into the community again. The next Polar Plunge will be taking place on April 1st, 2023, and both Gibson and Butter are encouraging residents to take part in this event. Jessica Clement, TBT News. Well, that was